Why is it that so much people bashing on Joelness lately? Everywhere we turn on the internet, we see man, woman, pitney, young, old, elderly, abash and Joelness. Never in the history of Jamaican politics, I have never seen so much people bashing a government in Jamaica. You know what I said? Me I tried to show YouTube a while ago. I hear a little youth sing a song, you know, it's a new song where the youth put out. And the youth draw a line of the song where the youth are saying money enough and big, like Andrew Wellness knows, you know. Come here, it me I say, wait. What is going on in? Why? Mr. Andrew, I don't know where you do them people there, you know. But me I tell you, them bit against the eye, you know. Yes, man. The people them bit against the eye, I wonder if you see it. I you look into it. Boy, maybe you need for all the meds, you know, Mr. Andrew, and go deep within the eye self. And see, if there's somewhere where you went wrong, you know, with these people, because... Me care, the people that just get up and just bash you every day, so all I tell you what I've got to do your mother and your wife and all them type of thing. Gianna Star. They tell them man. The people they not play with you nowadays, Mr. Aunt Julius. They not play with you at all, at all. So Shaquin Murray, what do you expect when the Prime Minister and the Education Minister send Ghana foreign can recruit teacher to come teach our children? I mean, not enough people say, left the man alone, make him man do what man do. We want some foreign teacher, yeah. But what happened to the teacher them? We got school. For how much years? Go practice teaching. And now can't get a job. And not, not just that alone. But they are underpaid our teacher. See, the other day, the teacher them forget some money. And they are the one give the teacher them the money. The teacher them forget raise up here. And them give the teacher them 20% raise up here. And laugh off of them by taking away but that twenty percent in other benefits. Them give it teacher them with one hand and take it away with the other hand. And you want we if trust this government? No, Shaquille Morima, we can't trust this government. This government is a evil and wicked and a dreadful government. Just like him do in the LQ sector, he must send go foreign. Foreign he must send go. Go get nurse if you come here. While we have much nurse at Jamaica. And guess what? Them are underpaid the people. Them, them are underpaid the nurse and the teacher. You soon you say they send Ghana foreign gang get uh, police to put in the force too. Because why? Jamaica is not owned by Jamaica anymore. Jamaica sell out to other foreign countries. The government sell out Jamaica to other foreign country. I'm telling you already, one of the main reasons why. Them are sent for foreign teacher to come teaching at the school them at Jamaica is because a lot of teacher already refuse to teach homosexuality in the school. A lot of teacher refuse to teach it in our school in Jamaica, which I agree with them. Refuse to teach it because Jamaica is a godly country. Jamaica is a god fearing country country but this man come and i mess up with country with all sort of nastiness but bless up to my viewers and my subscribers them me hope everybody having a blessed and a wonderful evening now my viewers and my subscribers remember in everything you do always put god first in every uh, any situation just always remember for call upon god always remember for pray because a prayer day Keep the devil away. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, we have a lot coming up inside this update. So, you definitely don't want to miss none of it. So, remember to watch the video until the end. Remember, leave a like on this video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet. And turn on the post notification bell for new content. Mark Golden, shout out the whole of Clarendon. Yeah, man, Mark Golden got to visit over there in Clarendon. And you don't want to miss it, people. So, we soon come. So welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers.
Big up to all of my viewers. Big up to all of my subscribers. Them. We continually support the channel and help the channel to grow. Now, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you're a new viewer's first time on my channel, then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification bell so whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. Share the content with a friend, a family, a loved one. Share it on your social media platform. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, it is a national disgrace to see how the government are deal with the people of Jamaica. It is a national disgrace we know say we have a government that cares zero about us. It is a national disgrace we know say government of your son got foreign, go get foreign teacher to come come teach our students here in Jamaica because of their agenda that they want to push on our children here in Jamaica. It is a national disgrace. Now, I am going to show you one of the main reasons why these people have to go foreign. Go get foreign teacher to come back at Jamaica to come teach with children them. They must come with teacher them because we teach them nothing to certain things. And I would reject not wanting to teach certain things to our ch um, children as well. I would reject it. For some reason, I would reject it because Jamaica is a very godly country. So we are not supposed to get caught up. I played this um, audio for you guys already and I'm going to play it again. So check this audio out, people. Canadian funded project promoting LGBTQI agenda targeting Jamaican teens. A Canadian funded project currently underway to teach children about so-called sexual and reproductive health rights has sparked the concern of Christians locally. Advocacy officer at the Jamaica Coalition for a Healthy Society, Philippa Davies, is amongst those who have accused the Jamaican government of exposing the nation's children to perverse ideas in exchange for money from the secular North American country. The Jamaican government had received $1.1 billion in November 2022 to finance two projects, one of which is to advance sexual and reproductive health and human rights in Jamaica. A little over half of the funding was allocated to implement the strengthening access, inclusion, and leadership for sexual and reproductive health and rights in Jamaica, SAIL, SRHR project, over a five-year period from 2022 to 2027. The project is targeted primarily at adolescents. What do we understand the term sexual and reproductive health and rights to mean? It means abortion. It means advocating and teaching LGBT ideology in schools. It means confusing children as to what their real human identity is. It means saying to children that sexual feelings ranks higher than what biology and anatomy says. That was Advocacy Officer at the Jamaica Coalition for a Healthy Society, Philippa Davies. The High Commission of Canada in Jamaica has made it clear that its team is committed to advancing the rights of the LGBTI community in Jamaica. One of the organizations that is carrying out the project is the Caribbean Vulnerable Communities, CVC, whose executive director, Ivan Cruikshank, is also the chairperson for the board of directors for JFLAG, a homosexual lobby group that advocates for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender LGBT people in Jamaica. The CVC was the organization that funded Jamaicans for Justice in efforts to introduce unauthorized sex education material in six privately run children's homes in 2014. The content prompted public outcry and condemnation from several groups in the island as it was deemed to promote the gay agenda and material not fit for children. The scandal resulted in investigations being launched by several state agencies, including the Police High Command and the resignation of former Executive Director Dr. Carlin Gomes from the Jamaicans for Justice Board. Davies said the ideologies that influences Canadian laws and policies are not hidden. 
The people of Jamaica should feel betrayed and angry that their government is forming partnership with a country whose public policies regarding sex and sexuality are clearly diabolical. This government is putting the health and human flourishing of future generations of Jamaican citizens on the auction block in exchange for Canadian dollars. Just look at Canadian law and policy to see where Jamaica is likely to end up if we continue along this path. Nihilism, sexual anarchy, abortion on demand, and euthanasia. This is what? This is about fundamental freedoms being suppressed in order to advance deviance and gender confusion. Several of the adolescents who benefited from a recent CVC training session gave a verbal commitment to share with their peers the teachings from the project. Davies noted that in Canada, some parents are choosing to send their children to private schools to shield them from the illogical ideologies being promoted in that country to confuse children. It is unconscionable that these persons insist that their beliefs be tied to aid in other countries. And it is tragic that our government ministers would not inform themselves or blind themselves to what is happening into Canada and for the love of money want to bring into Jamaican space, Jamaican school, Jamaican communities this kind of illogical ideology that is wreaking havoc in the Canadian society. Among those who were present for the announcement of the $1.1 billion funding from Canada was Jamaica's Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports, Olivia Grange, and then State Minister in that office, Alando Terrellong. Also present were Gillette Cuthbert Flynn, who at the time was the State Minister in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and Casey Carr. Chief Executive Officer of the National Parenting Support Commission, who represented the Ministry of Education and Youth at the launch. Davies stated that the focus on sexual and reproductive health rights is part of efforts to undermine and remove parental rights and make children more accessible to pedophiles. So if you move parents out of the way, parents who are the filter and the first protectors, if the state is removing parents out of the way. You're making vulnerable children who are still immature in their mental and emotional development and physical development open and accessible to pedophiles. That is state policy in Canada. And Jamaican politicians want to replicate that here. Jamaican parents need to be aware, they need to speak up and to say not on our watch, not in our country. We will not allow our government for the love of money to create this access to our children and make them vulnerable to pedophiles. Are these Jamaican politicians who are supporting the implementation of this program happy to sell out Jamaican children for money? That was advocacy officer at the Jamaica Coalition for a Healthy Society, Philippa Davies. See more details in the Freedom Come Reign on this developing story. I am Tamika Price Henry. Keep now, the government that try to show us, listen, they say if you are not interested to do the work, then other foreign people are going to come in and they are going to take the work and they are going to do the work. The government cares zero about our children. The government cares zero about its people. And until today, you have never heard the government come out and said anything at all about these things that are circulating in the media and characters and said, listen, I can guarantee you that I will not teach those things to our students, our children in school. I can guarantee you that our children will be okay. We are not going to do that. But he's not doing so, people. And there are plenty of interviews that this man went on. And when he went on those interviews, and the interviewer asked him about this whole LG, this, that, 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 anything what they call it. The man said, him not have a problem with it. And, you know, the way in talk, you can see, say, yes, him ready for legalize it. Now, it is alleged that this man has get over $1.8 billion to teach this thing to our children in school. And not just that, but abortion and prostitution and other stuff. I have been talking about this for 
maybe a year now maybe about a year now may I talk about this until other people start talking about it now because when I check everybody channel right now they might talk about it when I talk about it they never know and the next thing a lot of them used to say me I spread propaganda upon the prime minister now that everything will come to light it's not propaganda again because other people start talking about it as well even footer hype take up a, a share I cake and talk about it now and when me talk about it, I didn't hear it. Even Curly Locks from Twins of Twins. I heard it on his program as well. Including this audio that I just played. So, I was the first one eh, to come out and talk about this nastiness that they are taking to our children in school. In school, the government have put it. And we should sit back, relax, and watch that take place in our God-fearing country. People don't need to wake up. That's all I can say is that you don't need to wake up. You understand what I say? You don't need to wake up. And for the teacher them that decide not to teach it in school, big up on yourself. Other ways out there for you all to make money. And not just teaching alone. Other ways out there for you all to make money. You're not going to start in your own business or something. Now make Andrew only stick on and turn on the devil. Because if you're not looking at your face, you might devil yourself. Look upon him. A rich man like that, a prime minister, which doesn't look better than that. Look how the man look like a devil. The man just look like a devil. This is a God-fearing country. And we are not interested in that teaching to our children here in school. Alright? So people stay to thought and that down below in the comment section. And as usual, people, remember to leave a like on this video. Now, people, make we move on. Now, you have the Jamaican Labour Party. Vlog of them start to turn against their MP. You have a crasmite over there named Munchi. Yeah, man. She always a bone out Mark Golin wicked and a tell pure lie for Mark Golin. If you go look on her page, a pure lie she tell for Mark Golin and she call Mark Golin white man. Master Mark, all of what she can call Mark Golin. Now she and Rhoda Crawford kick off and she a give it to Rhoda Crawford. And let me tell them, you know, people. A God we serve and a God we trust and a God we believe in. So while they're there trying to bring down Mark Golin, they will be the one to bring down their own self. The Jamaican Lion Party will not survive this defeat that are coming. I can guarantee you that they will not survive this defeat. So people, check this out. I me, I me say road of my Crawford, I don't want to rub you know me MP. I want you take the things where, where the government give you next time and curl them up a bell for you go give PNP people for niam you out like when they niam you out before the local government election. And that me want you to do, look like you only want to serve one term. Look like you're tired and you want to go home go rest. And you know me love you know me, me not me MP, but me have to tell you the truth publicly. Because look like if people don't call you out publicly, you don't listen. Look like you like public call out too. So I'm not afraid to call you out publicly. I want you to take. I want you to take the packages we are getting from the government and give to the mayor. No, the reason for this crossmite to be behaving like this is that Rhoda Crawford gets some care packages and so forth to give out to the councillors. And you know what say the PNP are are the ones that have the most um councillors over there in Manchester, right? So Rhoda Crawford called one of the uh, PNP councillors, or mayor, I should say, and give it to that mayor and said he should give it out to his MPs and he gave that, that um, mayor something special. You understand? No, the JLP, them have a problem with that. Like, I know government money. And I know, I, 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 I should I say, I know taxpayers' money. And the Jamaican Labour Party councillors, them did not win. So they should hand it over. To the People's National Party, um, councillors as um, make them share it out. Now this woman you have a problem. You have a problem, Monchi. Monchi, remember then kick you out of out of Jamaica Labour Party again. Go sit down, man. In the money where you get fifth flag, it don't know. Go sit down. Monchi, go and sit down. Rhoda Crawford, do the right thing because I beat the comfy all out. I beat the way they go make you wall out of Jamaica and layered party people drop down. And the Japan go drop down. Me can't believe. Me can't believe this. I don't sink in that ground. Because I don't want to get up. Alright. So I just go on to the writing. Now. Me could go over to the Prime Minister himself. Or should I say. The future Prime Minister. Mr. Mark Golin. Because I don't know say. Mark Golin will become the Prime Minister of Jamaica. Now Mark Golin. Go circle down on Clarendon people. So check this out.
Where are we? The water lane. Water lane. Entrance to water lane. Entrance to water. Mm-hmm. Um, as you can see, the, 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 the wires are down. This is a eh? this is a main wire. Yeah, man. This is the main wire that leads mm -hmm. to the entire southern sections of the parish. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, the GPS class, this is how it looked the day after the yeah. hurricane passed. Yeah. And so this is the 17th. No wait, work has been done. Today is the 17th of July. And it's we're in the afternoon now. Yes. And as you can see, this is pretty much exactly how Beryl left it. And it's a major distribution or transmission line. Yes. Not sure which. But so, so JPS needs to act. So that is why when we are skeptical about the timelines provided. Yeah. Because we see this happening here on the ground. That with Exeter Police Station in Racecourt, Southwest Carnon. As you can see, it has suffered extensive damage. Um, the roof has been very badly hit and internal damage as well. You can see drywall, partitioning and so on, which has been thrown out onto the ground outside. Obviously not in a usable condition. No sign of any commencement of repairs or anything of that nature. No. And the hurricane is more than two weeks away. And, and the mm -hmm. commissioner of police would have visited here mm -hmm. last week mm -hmm. because obviously he was notified of the impact. Yes. The police officers who are normally stationed here, mm -hmm. they are now in Lionel Town. Wow. So they have to service this large police area. Um, all the way from Lionel Town, we have had issues of crime and violence here. Yes. Right? We had an upsurge in violence for two, three years straight. Mm -hmm. We have been able to get that down to a level. Mm -hmm. And so it's a So no time, tell me about this bridge yeah, now. This is Ali Brick. Mm -hmm. um, this is the pain of Southern Clarendon. Hmm. So, this bridge has been here for decades, mm -hmm. probably through more than half a century. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, recent work was done by the National Works Agency. Mm -hmm. We had questioned the competence of the work that was completed. Well, this is the result. Mm -hmm. The water that came from over that section, as you can see. Come, let's, go, let's look over here. All, of, all the way over here, mm -hmm. it came underneath the road. Mm -hmm. and, and cause that side over there to get to get part of the damage yes. and as you can see this side is sinking yes That's this quite section apparent. of the road is sinking yes so we don't know how long how much longer we have with this bridge to be honest with you mm -hmm. based on what we see here mm -hmm. and so it is an urgent request from all parties concerned because this bridge doesn't only serve the river spa for example which is another tremendous asset. Right now, there's no electricity. I was able to go into the building and look at the baths and so on. And, uh, you know, the healing properties of the waters there are internationally known and historically significant as well. So that is another facility that needs to be, I would say, invested in private-public partnerships to get that going. I think if we can get the roadway from the highway down into these parts um finished and you know nice so that it becomes accessible there's tremendous opportunities for for economic development here but in you know not in ways that would damage or destroy or change the feel of the place we want the feel of the place a natural feel to be preserved because that's really the, the value that's here but you know in, integrated in a environmentally sensitive way where opportunities can be um created for people to come Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, we are at Farka Beach, which is a lovely spot in southwest Tarendan. Fishing beach, a beach where you can come and cool out and get your fish and your fried dumpling. Them have their own special style of fried dumpling, I hear. But they have been devastated. And the fishermen have been very hard hit. Some have lost many, many fish pots out at sea. I heard one fisherman lost 90 and, you know, a roller wire, 30 grand, mm -hmm. you know, and then the special sticks that they use as well to make the pots. Another man lost 60 pots. So the fishermen have suffered a real blow. There's no electricity down here. Nobody from the government has come down here other than, I believe, a social worker. Yeah. And water is also an issue, though, since you put yes. in a generator. That should help them. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mosquitoes are absolutely do, and the next People's National Party government will be exploring that in a major way. You know, the road that runs from Milk River 
through the alligator pond, which bypasses the need to drive over the mountains, down spur tree, hill to gutters and around. That, I'm told that that is just bushed now, that need, just needs to be bushed and cleared. And then you can have, and there's some beautiful spots along that coast that we could develop, you know, attractions, tastefully done, ecologically sensitive, environmentally attuned, where pe pe Jamaicans and visitors can come and enjoy what there is to offer. The manatee, the sea cow, that's where they are and other spots of interest. So absolutely, we see what has happened in Treasure Beach, but that can be replicated in its own way um, to other sections along that coast. And Farka Beach here is another example, right through to Portland Cottage and Rocky Point. So there's lots of, of, of potential. In terms of different lots of the damage and things like that, and how long do you think this will take to restore, if it's managed properly? Well, the devastation of the sections that I have visited are, is very significant. I've been to southern St. Elizabeth, southern Manchester, southern Clarendon, parts of Saint, eastern St. Thomas as well. And I haven't yet gone to Portland. I want to visit there. But the reality is that the electricity system has been badly hit in these communities. It is not yet back. So when they're talking about 90 plus percent customers, it's pretty meaningless in so far as you have large swathes of Jamaica with communities that don't have light. Yeah, maybe your maybe your population centers, which weren't that badly affected by the hurricane, have had their light restored. But lots and lots of people in Jamaica do not have electricity. Lots of businesses are suffering from that. And homes have been damaged and destroyed. And it's a very real problem. And the people need help and they need it now. The people need help and they need it now. But tell us, eh? Sometimes to me, it looks like a Mark Golden at the Prime Minister because the job that Anjouli should be doing is not doing that job. Now, uh, the place to mash up, like Donga Anova and him place, I don't miss Anjouli every day because he wants to earn back Anova and Westmoreland for himself. Him not got St. Elizabeth, him not got Clarendon and him place because him already know, say them people. I vote for him, so him now go look for them, the people. Him are going to the area where nobody now vote for him. How that him do? Him realize what happened the other day. So him try to get back to those people over there in Westmoreland and Hanover. So him there them the place every single day. But I have a message for you, Mr. PM. I have a strong message for you. If you not change your dirty ways, there is no way nobody go vote for you. If you not change your wicked and your evil ways, the Jamaican people will not vote for you. And we don't know so you can't change. Because you're a cynic. You have one whole heap of different, different personality. Today you're a monster. Tomorrow you're a good person. And that day you're a church man. And that day you're a, you're, a, you're a godly Sure. Every day you put on a different face. So we can't trust you. So we are going to tell you now. Time come. Time come for your change. Time come for your walk away. Time come for your step away. Time come. The people need a leader. That they can trust a leader for the people, not someone like you. Because trust me, you is a national disgrace to Jamaica. I must say that one more time. You is a national disgrace to Jamaica. The JPS did suffer significant damage, infrastructure damage, with the passing of Beryl, All Island. The good news is, or the question that would come after, is can they afford? to fix it? And the answer to that is yes. Arising from the experiences of previous hurricanes and the difficulty of securing insurance for JPS assets, the OUR had approved in the rates for electricity a charge which goes to what is called the Electricity Disaster Fund, from which where there can be initial immediate resort to fund recovery when there is a disaster such as Hurricane Beryl. The fund currently has an accumulated value in the region of 50 million US dollars, and JPS will be allowed to draw down on this fund for its recovery. As a matter of fact, the OUR had approved a drawdown of 5 million US dollars prior to the hurricane to help fund inventory preparations for the hurricane season. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's good news. The bottom line is that they did spend close to $5 million to get inventory prior to the hurricane season. And unfortunately, at the beginning of the hurricane season, 
Beryl hit Jamaica. No, I don't know if you realize where they go going. I don't know if you realize what's going on. But them did want taxpayers. They did want we, the people of Jamaica, for pay JPS for their damage poles and all of that. Because them start say we are plant like we are plant, plant trees and all type of foolishness under the JPS line. Like on a JPS go run those line over the trees. So them did want us to pay for it. Now they're gonna say that they're gonna pay it out of the disaster funds. People they are Jamaica away, they want help. And you're gonna use the disaster funds to help JPS, a private company. JPS supposed to can stand on them on two feet. We not supposed to have to pay because all of them disaster funds eh, are taxpayers money, a fool with money. So why you going to use it for help JPS instead of use it for help the people of Jamaica? The people of Jamaica want help. I want to not help them. Look how long Barry will blow. I want to not build up a cottage. Not even a stall. Not even one one bedroom. Give somebody a Jamaica. After they lose their house. I want to not kneel at no house. Stop. No, not all I want to do. I want to do. But yet still. I want to have the audacity to take taxpayers money for help JPS. JPS will stand up on them two thief in foot because JPS thief. A criminal them. JPS are one of the thiefest company, apart from Dirty Stinking Water Commission. JPS thief, and we shouldn't have to pay back JPS we pull him up up down. So whether one wants to take you to disaster funds or what, we still have your payback. Taxpayers have your payback. Anyway, we want to take it, our taxpayers will pay back. Because those disaster funds are taxpayers' money. I hate to know if you can help the people of Jamaica. But you still, you don't help them. You don't help JPS. We already have it already. A private company. Not a, not a, a, a government company. A private company. Taxpayers money have to use for pay back JPS board disaster funds. Like you take with the idiot. I see them so with SSL. See them so with SSL. You did want taxpayers pay back SSL if I'm not still with the payback same way. Because when time you do something, I want to realize that the people stand up against it. We don't come with something different and say, ah, what? A, a, a insurance, you go do this, a, 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 a disaster funds, you go do this, a sound of steel. That's why we say, one of you come out of power, as a wicked set of people. Time come for your change. Time come for the whole of you pack up and go. We tired of you. One is a set of criminal. A set of carnival boy, Christ might. Time come, man. Darrell Valls. Time come for you because you behave like a you information minister. You know. Time come for you step down to man because you don't serve no purpose. But people stay to thought and that down below in the comment section. And as usual people, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet. And turn on the post notification bell so whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. Share the content with a friend, a family, a loved one. Share it on your social media platform and remember people don't be afraid to subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet all right bless up to everyone the viewers i'm a subscriber to them. blessings bless up all right